Hong Tuan over here. Shaolin Xiao Hong Tuan is like the basic form of Xiao Hong Tuan. It's like the basics, but I think it's called the basic because it contains basic elements, but it's quite an advanced form. It's, it's really difficult. Uh, everyone I talk to, they're like, the three years experience, 10 years or 20 years experience, they always say, oh, Xiao Hong Tuan. It's still there. <laughs> So a little bit of history. What I know about Xiao Mujuan is it's quite an older form. It dates back to uh, the early Ming Dynasty in honor of the first Ming emperor called uh, Hong Ming Wu. And that's, so that's about the 14th century. Some history dates back to even the Song Dynasty. So that's the 9th, 8th, 9th or 10th century. Then, of course, you have the legend of the father and son coming to the temple, etc. But going back to that uh, military wise, so it's already known that uh, around the Yangtze River in the Northlands, they uh, practice the military, practice some sort of Hong uh, uh, style training. So we know, uh, I assume, I don't know for sure, that uh, Hong Tran has a bit of a military background. So that also tells a bit about how it's used, what strategy is, what the concept is. So Xiao Hongquan and Da Hongquan, they don't have a lot of striking. So it's not a lot of punching in there. So some form like Tang Hu Xin Yuan Chuan, Dong Bi Chuan, they have much more punching. So uh, I think that's because, uh, because it's used as military. For armored people, you don't punch with people with armor. But what they do have is a push. So, Xiao Hong Tuan is of course famous for its pushing ball, its elbows, its uh, clamps, and uh, its, its chin up. Um, Da Hong Tuan is more because of its movement around, circling wise around the opponent. So, discussing about that, uh, keep that in mind for where we're going to. So, what I want to do is take some movements of Xiao Hong Tuan, discuss how I do it discuss uh, some versions I've also practiced, the modern, more modern versions, and maybe you can take those ideas and concepts into your practice. If you don't practice Shaolin or you don't know Shao Hong Tran, you can also use uh, ideas and concepts from this to take them in your forms. So let's first start at the beginning is preparation. Um, what I do is stand shoulder width and breathe in, the arms guide, next to your body, and then down. So your palms turning down. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Rising up, top of your head, but my hand on this, that's rising to the heavens, and then you sink. If you sink, still stretch, still keep connected to the heavens, don't drop, don't, it's not like, that's more like, when you're at 7 p.m. done after work, but your eyes, keep your eyes focused, be aware, keep your surroundings, get your blood flowing, get your chi going. Up. And the third. So the hands, I move like straight to the body, till the rib cage, and then spill down. It's sliding across your body. So what I said is get your focus, get your awareness, your chi flow and your blood flow. At the third time also notice your surroundings, notice yourself, be aware of yourself in your surroundings. So if you want to be a more military, be aware of your opponents, be aware of what is happening around you. But also be aware of yourself, be concentrated, get this done. This is the moment. So what I do is here on the side, more modern versus is here in front. Okay. This is what most, what you see in performances, most in the temple, do it like this. Traditional is more on the side. What I want is to breathe naturally in and out. If you do it like here, one moment, if you really focus, you'll see that your breath, your chi is being blocked at this point. You can breathe in and it's, it's stopping, it's halting. And then you have to go pushing down. This is not what you want. If you go on the side, it's more natural flow. I think it's also because your chest is more open, your elbows and, and uh, your armpit is less in the way if you're going like this. 
So breathing is like yin and yang. It should go flow in the natural state from yin to yang and back. It is not like, well, you know, till the end and then you go back. It needs to flow from yin, yang, yin, yang, going around. But I think this one blocks over here, it's stagnated, and then you have to push down. This is something, for me, it's less uh, convenient or less obvious. So after this, from here, starting position. Most modern versions, you see something like this, crossing, like this. It has a more dramatic effect. Come on, this looks really cool. <laughs> but at the moment you cross, again, your chest is a bit going inside, uh, what's it called? It's more flat going inside. And again, you're limiting your breathing. And imagine you have uh, thick padded clothing. So now we've got t-shirts, spring is coming. Imagine you're still in the military when you're going like this and all your arm is like pressing you in our chest. So at this moment, you've done all your chi, you've done all your work, you've done all your concentration, all your breathing, and then over here, you're limiting the breathing again. So this is two items, but I think uh, the traditional way has a more preference for me. So again, in, out, keep your head straight, keep your head not up, down, be aware, focus, and then ready. Yes, so second movement I want to discuss is Tui Tang, uh, the pushing ball. The most, uh, I think the, the technique with most difficulty for a lot of people. And uh, what I said before, Hong Tran is more of a military form, so there's a lot of pushing instead of punching. But you can imagine if you push someone and then draw your sword or whatever, if you push someone and it has distance for your spear or whatever. So. I think that has more background. Also, I think a pushing is maybe also better for if you want to go in self-defense, because uh, here in the Netherlands, even especially when you're doing some martial arts and you punch someone, either you can break your hand really easy, but secondly, is if the other one gets uh, damaged or whatever, you will get sued. But if you push someone and then you just make your way, maybe you have more chance. So, the pushing palm in the traditional way, traditional way has more circular motions. It has more finesse, actually, and body mechanics. Uh, I will also talk about more modern way. The traditional way is actually you make a circular way to give momentum in your body and then to push out. So what you do, is uh, your left and right half are making uh, counter opposing circles, like two grinding stones. This is what you do. I don't want to go into much details into how to do this and how to develop this skill, but I just want to show you and I want to point out some uh, big mistakes. <clears throat> so you have coming like this. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it from the side is even better. So watch my left hand, I'm doing left hand palm. It's going back, my right shoulder is going forward, and then pushes out. So my arm is like making a trajectory of like a, a, a NASA spaceship in orbit. Going around, and then out. And on the right side, the same. In front, it looks like this. Keep it loose, keep it relaxed. <clears throat> if you wanna, don't wanna use the stepping. So if that big circles is not familiar to you for a normal way, if you practice more like uh, <clears throat> going outside, you have also like a middle between, and then you go from this stance for instance, in a marble stance with a double block, much many beginners learn like this. You can turn because you have the parry and then push, and you still have that circle. 
So you have like a big spiral. If you watch this shoulder, it's going down and up, down and up, down. And up. So let me think this is good. You see, because I have dark clothing, but my right shoulder and my left shoulder are like counter opposing. Like this. Of course, my hips are doing the same. Yes. And from this side, we have got this idea. So there are several items in this, this circle, but it's commonly going wrong. So first of all is <coughs> the left hand, if I don't want to do a left push from this angle, you can see that this side, you want to not exaggerate the circle too much. What people will do is like this, really exaggerate it. You can swing all the way back, the arm and the body, and then move in. So this, this is not the way it should be done. Keep your body more intact and close. And the circle is more inside the frame of your body. So this is my body from this point, this point, this point, yes? And don't go outside the frame like this and swing it. Don't do that. Keep it inside that frame. That's one. Secondly is you forget the other half of your body. That's the right side. Those are like really grinding circles opposing each other. So it's not only this one going up and down. But as this one goes up, left side, the right side is going down. So you have this motion. Yeah, only Jacqueline is having a video. Come on, show me. <laughs> yes, okay. Show me. No, the circle is more, you can go, um, you're doing a left side push. And let me think, let me think, let me think. It can go, uh, when you're at six o'clock, it can go even further, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, much higher. Keep your elbow more in and uh, let me see. Here it is. So a white marker. Uh -huh. Circles like this. Really almost going totally way round. Your circles like this. And then you, you're too eager to push. From mm -hmm. here I want to go out. Here, 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 here it is. So this is really going Almost full circle. Okay. Yeah, it's better. And this is really hard skill. This is not easy. It's not like you do five minutes in a, in a Zoom class. No, no, this is great. <laughs> but uh, the idea is, of course, you give momentum to your body and swing it out. Yes? That's one thing. Secondly is don't over. Don't the left arm. When I want to do the left push going out, that's too much. Keep it connected to your body. I will come to that later. And the third item is make it mm, with two opposing halves, uh, two grinder stones. Yeah. Then a bit about the stepping, if you wanna do stepping. <clears throat> Let me see, yes, for my legs. If I, again, left palm push, it's dropping and the push is coming out at the moment, you're standing up into a kumbu. So you're going like this, turn, 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 and up. The most important thing is the alignment of your knee. Foot is in front, going the same way as your push. A lot of people have a tendency to go outwards or they have the front foot forward and the knee going out. So they have something like this. Look at this, this knee is going out and this way. Also in a lot of performance you see with Shao Hong Tren, look at my feet. When you do the push, they like standing like this, a Kung Bu with the feet um, perpendicular, it's called, in the way yeah. of a movement. 
So what I want is the back foot going the same way as you want to go. It has several benefits, several advantages. First of all, uh, <clears throat> your kungu, if your legs, front leg and back leg are like this. Um, so this is the hip bones. My fists are the hip bones. If they're outside, then the hip bone is slightly turned. Actually, your balance going this way or either this way is less. Secondly is this knee and you want to go that way. So if you go a lot of force and your knee is pointing that way, you will have a uh. knee injury really quickly. But you can also see in a lot of Wushu athletes have knee problems. This is a lot of ways of happening because of this knee. And thirdly, you want to have a kinetic path of energy going that way. A chin path or power path that way. Also modern boxes. <coughs> you can see for every alley. So if you want to have a right left punch and a right punch, the foot is directing the same way because you have a kinetic path, all the punch, shoulder, hip, to the leg, to the ground. Because that's what you always say, yeah? power comes from the ground. But if you don't have it like this, your kinetic chain is actually more blocked here in the hips and in the knee. And actually, if you want to go like this, it's the transfer of energy is not fully efficient. But Jen, everybody does it because I'm much quicker if I do it like this. <laughs> that's, that's what they say, yeah? So hop, bam, and back. Yes, but that's in fencing. And fencing is like a more tip of a point and then hit and back, huh? <laughs> if you want to go full power, because we're doing Kung Fu, you want to push someone over, you want to break someone's neck. And if you want to do it like this, you're compromising for you want to go back. Why do you want to go back? You're attacking. Don't go in defense. Don't think of, oh, I have to attack, but always be careful to retreat. Then you're doing it mm, halfway in intent. So full force in and back. And actually, um, if you go in like this, you can also easily step back. A lot of Kendo, Japanese Kendo, have also this quick step going in and back with foot front. And don't say they're not fast enough for retreating because they're really fast. Pop, in and out. So <clears throat> you can always try to get the foot front, back foot more aligned. It has more stability, it has more efficiency of delivering power, and it has less prone to injuries. So going back to a push and palm, left one going in, this one going down, 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 and you push out. So making a circle, going in, going in, and out. You're not even punching, but uh, you can feel it already that your elbow has momentum, 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 and then you're pushing out with your leg. Relax, relax, relax. So Jacqueline, don't focus on your elbow, don't focus on your hand, focus on your leg. Circle, momentum, and out. Actually, my arm is just bouncing. Like, like this T-Rex arm that's just bouncing on my, my body. Yes, and then all combined, you can feel the momentum in your body pushing, want to push the arm out. Let me see, show you, show it. Huh? Show it. <laughs> ah, yes, so your arm is getting way too much in the back. Get it here more in the rib cage. We have the circle, elbow in the ribcage, then going out. Don't get it disconnected from your body. Yes? Okay. Yes. yes. All tight and connected.
Don't focus on that pump. Don't focus on the pump. Focus on the stepping. Focus on your back leg. Uh, not bad, not bad in just 10 minutes. So the last item that I see a lot is <clears throat> when the push the palm, because you have left and right, make it, you got to harmonize it with the three harmonies, three external harmonies. So you've got your shoulder, your hip connected to the elbow, and uh, the elbow is connected to your knee and your wrist is connected to your ankle. Uh, I assume you'll know that. So if you have the palm, the pushing palm, and stance is like this. You have your kongu, feet forward, what we just said. The elbow, the, the hips are connected to your shoulder. So don't do it like this, don't twist. Other way, over bent, also see that a lot. To uh, over commit it, then you're like this. Stand up straight, keep this connected. Crosswise, elbow is above your knee. So the Kung Fu is a little bit more on the inside. This is my middle line. This is my outside. The knee is over here. Goes like this. Then your palm over your foot. Keep it also connected. I always hit with this side, this uh, flashy side of the palm. Some more like frontal, but I like this part. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you can see it. So, but everything is more in one line. What people, a lot of people do, because you have a left and a right palm, you have left palm and a right palm going on shoulder basis. But better is to have it in one line, here in the center line, cross your heart. This is where you want to hit people. So if you do it like this, you're hitting someone's shoulder, or someone ears if they have really big ears. <laughs> here inside. So this is the right palm. Left. Right. See? So that makes the alignment of your body correct. Okay? Right. Show me. Too much focus on the arm. <laughs> so you're too eager to push. You push with your body and not with your palm. Oh, okay, okay. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Correct? So keep uh -huh. the line. Yes? Okay. Yes. The wrist is connected to your ankle, and uh, they often ask me, Jen, how do you do that? It's actually when you're um, pushing yourself out and your ankle uh, going to the uh, last position, to the end position, this is actually where you also flip your wrist. So then it all comes together. So if you see, me, look at my feet and my uh, and, uh, wrist, exactly it looks like this. Okay. That's the connection. Also, when his knee and elbow comes together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there are many items to recap. We use a circular motion to give momentum to your body. Circular motion consists of two parts of your body, a left side and a right side, like two grinding stones that are working in opposite ways. That's one. Don't uh, overdo the circle that your left part is outside of the circle of your frame. Don't swing it like this. That's too much. Keep it nice and tight inside your body, your elbows connected to your rib cage. Then go in. <clears throat> then your feet. When you go 
inside the circle, go to the kung fu. And the feet is moving the same way. Don't place it perpendicular. Because you want to have maximum transfer of energy, stability, and less prone injury uh, to your knee. That's the second one. The third one is the final position. When you make a circle, you have momentum. You make a kinetic link to your, uh, to your back leg, stretch it out, and then it pushes via the rib cage, pushes the elbow out, and then you got to push. <clears throat> when you push out, make sure that you've got alignment, you've got leuge, or the three external harmonies in the beast, but the uh, shoulder and the hip, the elbow and the knee, and the wrist and the ankle. Keep that in one line, in the center line. Yes? Some remarks about pushing palms in general is Chen. And what you say a lot to me is, Chen, you don't fight with circles, right? Because that takes much time. If some opponent's coming up to me, straight line is always faster than a circle. And you don't do like a, when a guy is coming up to you and he gives you a straight punch, you go all the way, like a nice circle, step in and push. But we practice forms just for the principles to get the ideas and concepts of your body mechanics going. Of course, you don't fight like this. They fight like that in the movies. <laughs> I wish I could fight like that. So it will be more, the, the circles will be smaller and smaller and smaller. So to a point, it's not noticeable anymore. You go like this. Coming more in like this. It's faster. It looks more like straight. But I'm still making a circle, still keeping close to the contacts of uh, the principles of the left side, the right side, the six harmonies. <clears throat> but it's just more direct. Yes? Any yeah. questions about this part? No, this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yes? Okay, <laughs> the next part. Uh, next item that's also really difficult for most is uh, swashing. Shrink the body. So what we most have from the palm, most people go back like this, right? In the traditional way, what I've learned is going in, you go and grab something, grab arm, grab butt, and push up. Well, this is pushing down. So most people see this as a retreat. So something's coming at you, retreat, you're going back in. And the lineage, what I'm learning is more like you grab something, you push up, everything is rising up, and this is pushing down. So you have like an arm bar, leg bar, head bar, head lock of pushing down. And this one is pushing up. So you've got two sides, one's going up, and the other one is going down. This going up, standing up, is of course more of an hand hang method. So um, increasing your uh, posture. Of course, in a fight, you will not go like this and then go down. But you will go down directly. But the idea is, uh, for most people, is they have the palm going to source and then they're like this. But that momentum of, uh, watch my head, this momentum of being here in a straight line going down that's often too, too direct, too forceful, and you will lose your balance. So what they do is watch my head here in a circular motion, going up and then going down. It's like almost you're going from kung fu, uh, from a bubu to a kung fu. From a bubu, it's also in a circular motion going up. Then you're going from bubu directly to kung fu, you have lots of stability problems you see a lot at beginners. <clears throat> so you have the pushing palm going in a circular motion, going up and then going down. Okay. Yes. So the right hand, if I'm from the left palm, the right hand is grabbing, and the left one is sliding away. Right one is in the rib cage, pushing upwards. This one is making contact to 
the heavens, as they say, and the left one is pushing down. Knee is up, feet is pointing down. <clears throat> then the most people have problems with this stance. Easiest, what I tell my students is, keep your head up and where my head nod is, keep that stretched out all the way up. So people tend to lose the balance, that's normal, and they want to correct with the hip. So it's much easier if you correct it with your head, you point it up, keep it up. Keep your neck erected, so this one, and then your shoulders, and your back, etc., etc. Keep it going up, 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 and only when you're stable, then you push down. What you want in your solution is you want to compress your body. So you're going down, 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 down. So tingle, uh, your toe of your left foot is around the middle of your right foot and keep your legs closed. This is also what you see a lot. You have like the legs open like this, but it's much easier actually if you hold it close together, you did it uh, with a tight fit. <laughs> so you have, what's well, called stability and strength of each other. And then you can sink. Pushing down with one side and look outside to where you're going. Yes? Yes. Show me. Up, 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 more up. The tip of your head going up, straight up. Point your neck out. Yeah. So the stability is much easier. Yes. Wait, how far um, the arm stays here though, yes? The arm, yeah. elbow is stayed in the rib cage. Okay, just look at the, okay. So you don't have to go up. It's the, the will, the intent that's going up. So you don't have to actually push up. It's like, uh, wait, wait a second. If I have this arm of someone else, and then grab it like this. Ah, uh, okay. So it's not okay. like pushing your wrist out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More like the idea of this side, the right side is pushing upwards, and the other one is pushing downwards. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, good, 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 good. Upwards, up, 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 and then down. Yes. Okay, okay. But, <clears throat> no, I like that, I like that. That's cool. Also, this up and down, this is a lot used, uh, for instance, you have also the double clouds, no, the double clouds of the peak to a seven star fist, like this. In sharp yeah. movement. You have this in Tahu trend. You have something in Tahu Sinyaman trend like this. Keep this body erected. Keep it straight. Keep it going up, pushing out. Push this where my hand on this. Push that up to the heavens. Mm -hmm. Not your chin up, but this part is up. So don't go this way because then you will topple over. <laughs> this one needs to go up. <clears throat> Makes it much easier for those stances. But actually, uh, most of the work is if this is erected, the body straight is much, much easier. And also, mm, if you do boxing or kickboxing, Muay Thai, keep your body straight. It's much easier for, to have, if you go like this, it's, your body is not in a proficient way to get a kinetic link to the ground and your stability is gone. Also, your uh, point of gravity, it's not right in the middle. Right. It's more like if you have your feet like this, it's going, making a map all around exactly in the middle. So mm -hmm. if you want to do like kickboxing, also what they do is stretch out mm -hmm. and do the kick. Huh. They don't do it like, because then you have, uh, I don't know what's called, but then you've got like this, 
alleyway pin going all the way around, <laughs> you know? It's really unstable. But also blocking, we do it like this. Keep it all straight up. We don't go, then you topple over. Okay. Same for our forms. Keep it nice and straight. Yes? Yes. Any questions about this move? Oh. It's quite easy then, huh? Keep practicing. No, it's not easy, but it, it <laughs> needs a lot of work. <laughs> it's a hard move. <clears throat> so we're talking about head movement. And uh, this is something that's really important. We were just talking about keep your head straight, keep your body straight. What I see in Shao Hong Tuan, Shao Hong Tuan is going often to left and right, left and right. Uh, what people do is they move their body and the head is following, like the head is up in the clouds. But you need to get awareness, intent in here, focus, your eyes. This is the brain, this is the, uh, the mast of a ship, so to say. So if that topples, your whole body topples. And you don't want to make the body move first and then your head follows. The head first and then the body follows. So if you have your palm <clears throat> looking that way, over your hand, this side from this angle. So again, we've got a nice connection there. Huh? Uh, the hips and the shoulders, the, the knee and the elbow, and the wrist and the uh, ankle. Want to look over the past your hand. Don't block your hand. Keep your eyes on too low. If we're going to the left and right, because mm -hmm. uh, Shao Hong Tuan has left and right palms, right? Mm -hmm. Go this way. Look the other way. And then out. Look the other way. And then go out. So also in your forms, if you only want to do performance, or if you want to do something else, try to get your head movement involved. You don't want to go like uh, some people's like this. Yep. Moving, still watching that way, somewhere in the clouds, this way. And another beginner mistake is like, they watch their feet. They're like this, watching down, and like this. Really not mindful. So we try to be aware. So we have this. Go another way. Yes. That's better. <clears throat> also, when you have to turn, you have uh, like it looks like this. And the backhand slap on the palm. Look back and then go in the block. Slap. Go this way. All the way around. And push. Okay. So that's really important. <coughs> uh, let me see. Where you have that more in Xie Xin Kung Bu. When you have the Ma Bu block when crossing. We're going to this move next. Look to the back. So, Xie Xin Kung Bu. Xie Xin Kung Bu looks like, for me, looks like this. Going all the way in a cross shape, slanted way. So, Xie Xin means a slanted form, shape. Yes. So, there are multiple ways of doing. So, you can go outside and make a tambien, a whip slide. You can make a push, pushing out, making it strong. In most modern ways, you see something like this, the two punches, going one sideways and one more in front. It doesn't matter, actually. The principle is almost always the same. This is, you have momentum of being slanted, going from maru to a slanted shape, that's one thing. And the second is the Tongpi principle, so around the back. So you have one fist all the way front to your back, to the other arm and fist. Make that a strong, yeah, what's called? The strong, 
Yeah, cage, hula hoop. So this is one strong shape. From all the way back. <clears throat> so you have your mabu. You're going up of mabu and out. Again, so what most important is for this move, uh, first level is like you make your slanted form, twist in nicely, and get the connection via the back from the left side to the right side, or the right side to the left side. Yeah. Show me. Yes, nice, nice. Yeah, nice. Yes, <laughs> looks really good. Looks really good. So, if you want to uh, uh, experiment with different ways, you can do it like this. Uh, let me see from this side. Huh? Then you slap out like a tambian, single whip. Because you have the single whip, huh? like this, this. You can also single whip from Shishin Kung Fu. You can do a throw. This one is uh, the most used application. You come in, you throw somebody. Uh, okay. This is more like uh, when you're in the ocean uh, and you want to push away the waves. And uh, thirdly is a double punch. Then you come on something like this. So there are three ways I see uh, uh, most often used. You can experiment with that. But you got it down. You got the power in your in your uh, Xie Kung Fu part. And don't forget the head turn. <laughs> but don't go like this. All mindless turns. It's like head first, <clears throat> going down. Yes, nice, nice. Yes, really good, really good. Uh, so my shufu always tells me this is like a, a bull's head turning and the arms like his horns, like mm. Yes, nice. A lot of power in there. Looks really good. Okay, I've got time for one movement, last one. Wu uh, Hua Chuasang. And that's the final pose. <clears throat> uh, let me see you coming from uh, here. So um, this movement, I think the head movement is really important and the hips. So everyone has a slight different way of doing this because this is, I think, the most famous Shaolin stance ever because it had every form, almost every form closes with this one. So there are multiple ways, but I think the most important is to get your connection going. So you've got your little the six harmonies uh, for the external ones is again, uh, elbow and ankle, uh, sorry, wrist and ankle, elbow and knee, hips and shoulder, and from the left side and right side and cross. So from my point of view, this is my right side. I'm turning, blocking this way. So, my wrist and ankle are connected. They're not like this, but they're more nice in the same line. My focus also the same. My elbow and my knee are the same way. So here is my uh, high upper leg tie, and this is my elbow pointing in the same direction. And then uh, my hips and my shoulder, they are not, I'm not twisting. So this is twisted. So this is my shoulder and my hip, or the other way, but they're more in line. Keep a nice straight body. And again, this is up. Stretch your body up, pushing out. Then the other way. So this 
right side becomes a low block. And then to the other side. So you got this. And the head movement. Your arms, your hands, do not pass your eyes. So your hands is not uh, covering your eyes. The tops, tips of your hands is just below your eyes. So it's protecting more your jaw. And you know, uh, for movies, for matches, our experience, a good punch in the jaw is a knockout. You will go down. So this is protecting over here. <clears throat> but you still want to look. So when you move your hand, don't do it like this. But your head is rolling with it. Yes? And keep your connection correct. Keep your body straight. Keep breathing. So what you don't want is uh, losing the connection. And it was, looks more, what's called friendly, spastic. For example, like <laughs> Or after the frame too much. And you go like this. <laughs> So I know some have like this exaggerated look, but it's inside the frame because you don't worry about strikes 50 centimeters outside your body. They won't hit you, they will hurt. It's here, this frame, this needs to be protected, the small frame. Yes, uh, Jackie, don't do this, the arms, it's coming outside. So you have your inside. Stay inside. What you do is make a swing and go from outside to the inside. So exaggerate it looks like this. You do it like this. Outside, inside. Outside, inside. But keep everything on the inside. Okay. Yes. And then your head. Keep watching, follow it. Your hands are following your face. Okay. Yes. Oh. And then to the final one, going the block low in my book, reverse block and the overhead punch. The way you look is not straight, not sideways, but about 30 degrees. So one, two. <clears throat> there are different ways of doing this. So what I've been told is most in the temple, they have the more the hard style. Use the fist. <clears throat> and other side of the mountain is more soft style and they have more the open hands. Like this. Palm up, palm outwards. The idea is they train more of their chi and with fingers open, the chi can flow better. That's the idea. What you prefer, what you do is up to you. Yes, yeah. most important, get that connection Good. Get your frame. Not outside, don't make it spastic. Keep your connection. <clears throat> your head movement goes first, your hand follows. Then to the end stance, Mahu, keep your body nice and straight and look around 30 degrees to the left. Not all the way, not 90 degrees, not zero, around 30. Uh -huh. And then don't mistake what I see over here in performance wise. Over here, oh yes, I'm done. Hey, agreed. Bye. See you later. I'm going to drink. But <laughs> it's here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now you're done. And then this final greetings and whatsoever, etc. Walk off the stage. <laughs> Like a boss, but don't do it like <laughs> this. 
Okay. <clears throat> Relax and then breathing. Nice, 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 nice. So that's a common mistake. And bro, <laughs> some people's like this. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this, this is stress, etc. So uh, let's look at the time. Yeah, that's about it. It's a thing. Uh, this is my hour. So, any questions of the things we covered? Um, at some but, point, can we get a review? There's no one, there's no one past me, uh, next to me, next after me. So, uh, it's time for questions. Um, this was amazing, absolutely amazing. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Well, thank you for joining because you're the only one with video and I really enjoyed that I can see someone doing something so I can also interact. Um, teaching is some point, yeah? Sorry, at some point, can you make a video more detail of the very first part, like uh, the push palms and also coming back? I would mm, There's a video on YouTube uh, of... Uh, uh, Master Hu Tsang Sun uh -huh. uh, of uh, Jung Hong and me, and uh, the, the basics are covered. Oh, so okay. The channel is uh, Shaolin Xin Yi Ba. Okay. Uh, you can find it. It's, it's called Xiao Hong Chuan. It's uh, actually it's, it's had been viewed a lot. Okay. But, okay. Uh, After this. Then it's covered. But it's, uh, it's a skill. I also don't want to go into details. Uh -huh. but skills really hard to learn from video. Right, right. But you can always try, and 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 because I know not everyone has the ability exactly now to travel, huh? Yeah. You want, you want to continue. You want to progress. So right. check it out. I can send you the link if you uh, need to. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I think it's yeah the the tang the pushing palm.